Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Continuing from our previous exploration into the static systems of engineering, where we analyze structural integrity and performance under stationary conditions, today we embark on a journey into the dynamic realm of prosthetic knee joints. Dynamics, a pivotal branch of mechanics, unravels behavior of objects in motion, focusing on the forces, torques, and accelerations that govern their movement. In our previous static analysis, we delved deep into fundamental engineering principles to understand how structures withstand various loads without deformation or failure. Through free body diagrams and equilibrium-based analysis, we ensured structural components could safely, supply, could safely support applied forces. However, the practical application of prosthetic knee joints introduces dynamic conditions where users and devices are in continuous motion. Understanding this dynamic response is crucial for enhancing design, ensuring user stability, and optimizing performance during movement phases. Our objectives are set to comprehensively understand and optimize the dynamics of prosthetic knee joints. Our first objective is to solve kinematics and kinetics problems for rigid bodies in 2D motion, focusing on the prosthetic knee joint. Our second objective is to address challenges related to kinematics and kinetics of slider and four bar mechanisms within prosthetic knee joints. The third objective is to analyze the kinetics and kinematics performance of prosthetic knee joints under real world conditions. The fourth objective is to determine the optimal kinematic performance of prosthetic knee joints considering various design parameters. And the last objective is to propose a novel biomedical device optimized for specific kinematics and kinetics requirement focusing on prosthetic knee joints. Moving on to the force analysis. The diagram shown is the knee processes implanted into a man. The implant and the man together is 80 kilograms. Let's calculate the force required to move the prosthetic knee joint across a straight path. We can calculate the weight with the mass and the gravitational acceleration and we will get 784.8 newtons. The normal force will be equal to the weight. Then, the frictional force, assuming that the coefficient of friction is 0.2, we will get 156.96 newtons. Using the Newton second law, F equals to MA, the force required to move the prosthetic knee joint will be 276.96 newtons. Let's look at the optimization of the prosthetic knee functionality. We're going to be looking into the kinematic analysis, alignment strategies, and prescription guidelines for four bar linkage mechanisms. Firstly, the widespread availability of forward linkage knee are available to individuals with transfemural amputations, and it offers a functional advantage. But still, their adoption remains limited. This is because maybe the fittest or the prescribers are not familiar or they do not understand the forward linkage. So, the study aims to elucidate the kinematics of various forebar mechanisms and delineate the disparities and prescription criteria among three distinct classes of available forebar linkage mechanisms for amputees. So, this will really help to choose which is the suitable um, type of mechanism to prescribe to patients. Next is the load line which is the main force acting on the prosthetic knee while bearing weight. It doesn't usually run straight from the hip to the ankle or from the socket to the foot center. This line will shift as you walk and it will influence your knee extension and flexion. Using the hip muscle actively can help stabilize the knee. Let's now talk about the alignment. When setting up a prosthetic leg, Professionals use vertical reference lines to make sure it's stable when you put weight on it. There are two systems here, German system and the UC Berkeley system. Firstly, the German system, it uses a vertical line from the hip joint down to the middle of the foot. Then the Berkeley system, which uses center line of the shank pylon, which is the part of the prosthetic leg between the knee and the foot. Between the two, the UC Berkeley system is more popular because it's simpler and works well with different prosthetic designs. Next, comparative analysis. Both of these alignment systems reveal their fundamental similarities. First, 
both systems aim to optimize alignment to improve prosthetic functionality and user comfort. They also both emphasize the postural placement of the knee center relative to a vertical reference line for stability. Lastly, both systems require careful measurement and adjustment during the fitting process. Therefore, to enhance knee stability during dynamic alignment, the posterior offset of the knee center relative to the vertical reference line shall be increased. This dimension is typically predetermined by the manufacturer in modular endoskeletal system, necessitating check during fitting. Then, the vertical reference line, which drop from the bisector of the medial brim, shall pass at least 6 mm ahead of a single axis knee center when viewed from the medial side. Considering the rotation of the knee bolt, the lateral view suggests a posterior placement of 6 to 12 mm. Next is the forward shift of the BMB point per degree of socket extension for a given BMB knee dimension. The formula is S equal to DE over 57.3. For example, given D equal to 380 mm, 50 inchi, E equal to 1 degree. S will be 6.6 mm, 0 0.2 inchi per degree of extension where 57.3 is the factor for conversion of degree to radian. Therefore, it is apparent that small changes in the socket angle can have a major effect on the posterior offset. The compensating angular change at the angle will be somewhat smaller. Assume a length is 760mm 30 inchi from BMB to ankle, the angular change A at the ankle will be computed from the formula A equal to 57.3 S over L. A will be 0 0.5 degree plantar flexion. Lastly, dynamic alignment to boost knee stability. This involves a two-step process. Firstly, incrementally extending the socket which typically in one degree instruments to shift the upper reference point forward by approximately 6 mm per degree. After this adjustment, the amputee must bring the reference point back to the standing position by posterior rotation about the foot support point, reducing the previously set A space. Second is making slightly plantar flexion adjustment at the ankle using the adjustable coupling which restore the desired air space. This result in a posterior shift of the knee axis with minimal disturbance to the socket foot relationship. Adjusting foot function is vital for knee stability. It's crucial to address issues like heel pressure, leg length and ball of foot support to optimize stability during walking. The common option is single axis and 4 bar linkage. Shown here is both of their stability diagram, illustrating the contribution of residual hip musculature to knee stability during walking. It highlights the importance of proper alignment and adjustment, particularly at the foot and ankle, in ensuring knee stability and overall functionality in prosthetic design. Then, Power and efficiency of the prosthetic knee joint. First, power of the prosthetic knee joint. Considering a walking speed of 1.2 meter per second, P equal to force multiplied speed equal to 401.36 multiply 1.2 equal to 601.632. Next, efficiency of the prosthetic knee joint. The mechanical efficiency is calculated as Power output over power input equal to 601.632 over 800 equal to 0 0.75204. The mechanical efficiency of the prosthetic knee joint is approximately 0 0.75204. Next, mechanism of the prosthetic knee joint. The prosthetic knee joint operates through sophisticated mechanical linkage system incorporating sliders and pivots to facilitate control motion. 
The kinematic diagram illustrates the synchronized movement of components during walking cycle, ensuring stability and efficiency. In the world of prosthetic knee design, the combination of mechanics, smart technology, and user comfort is constantly evolving. In assessing the force required to move the prosthetic knee joint across the straight path, our findings align with the principles outlined by Ashragi et al. in 2017. The calculated force of the 276.69 Newton corresponded well with the expected value derived from Newton's law and frictional coefficients. Our discussion on optimizing prosthetic knee functionality through kinematics analysis and alignment strategy resonates with the findings of Hitchman et al. in 2020. They emphasize the importance of dynamic alignment in improving knee ankle foot orthosis stability, a principle that may apply to prosthetic knee mechanism as well. By incrementally adjusting socket extension and ankle plantar flexion, we aim to enhance knee stability during dynamic activities such as walking. Our analysis of the power and efficiency of the prosthetic knee joint shed light on its functional performance during walking. The calculated mechanical efficiency of approximately 75% indicates a reasonable conversion of input power to output mechanical work. This finding is consistent with the findings of Smith et al. in 2016, who conducted a similar analysis on prosthetic ankle foot mechanism. Moving on to the mechanism of the prosthetic knee joint. Our discussion of the mechanical linkage system used in prosthetic knee joints highlights the complexity of these devices and the engineering principle underlying the, their design. The kinematics diagram presented in our study illustrates the coordinate movement of components during walking cycles, emphasizing the importance of synchronization for stability and efficiency. Well, while our study provides valuable insights into prosthetic knee functionality, several areas offer opportunities for improvement and future research. First, enhanced control system. By integrating advanced control algorithms and sensor technologies can improve the responsiveness and adaptability of prosthetic knee joints. Research into real-time feedback mechanism and predictive control strategy could further enhance user experience and functional outcomes. Next, the customization and personalization. Tailoring prosthetic devices to individual users' characteristics such as anatomy, gait patterns and activity levels can optimize comfort and performance. Advances in additive manufacturing and computer-aided design allow for greater customization of prosthetics components, offering users a more personal Next, biomechanical modeling and simulation. By utilizing computational modeling and simulation techniques, we can aid in the design and optimization of prosthetics knee joint by simulating different loading conditions and gait patterns. Researchers can identify design parameters that optimize performance while minimizing biomechanical stress on residual limb tissues. Therefore, in conclusion, our study into prosthetic knee functionality combines biomechanics, engineering, and also human resilience. We analyzed the dynamic behavior of prosthetic knee joints, focusing on the four-bar linkage mechanism. Key findings emphasize the importance of kinematic and also kinetic factors for stability efficiency, and also functionality, setting the stage for future design improvement. Therefore, as we conclude, we invite innovation, collaboration, and boundary pushing in prosthetic knee biomechanics where the journey is as enriching as the destination. Thank you.